Welcome to the Sofa Kingdom podcast with your host, Nelson, Ed, and no Ian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, somebody's missing. So we're having an epidemic of missing Bankses. <laughs> so what has happened was after um, Ian's brother Shay was here a week ago, he had the sniffles. Yes. And so today, obviously... Ian has the sniffles. Yes, it's going around. It is. It's going around. There's a <laughs> lot of sniffles going around in the Banks' world. Um, but no, he's legitimately sick, and uh, he even wanted to come in today and be a part of the podcast. Yeah, keep strep throat through yourself. We said no fucking thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like we can we can hold down the fort for one day without yep. uh, Banks. We you know he will be missed, Mister Ian, but. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, and in this world of uh, removing the courage port from everybody's phone, the uh, ability to just call in with an auxiliary cable is now null and void. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You need a dongle for that. So uh, thanks, Apple. Yeah, yeah. You need a dongle for just about everything these days. <laughs> I walk around like, where can I put my dongle? You know what I mean? <laughs> no, yeah. We have to do these things from time to time. Um, I've been watching some trailers. Um, Yep. There's some good things actually on the horizon. And plenty of fake ones popping off as well as always. Yes, yes. And like we were talking about privately, these fake trailers yes. are getting so goddamn good yep. that I sat down and I watched this trailer and I'm like, I hope the real movie is as good <laughs> as this fake fucking trailer right here. It's amazing because when you, if you only got to knock it down to one minute of highlights, um, you can really pull from movie one to, to create what looks like movie two. You take a couple of still images that they released from the press, and it's really not that hard of a problem anymore if you know what to do with the computer. Because all you do is you just let it run the program, and if it takes a little longer to make it look better, you just let it run a little longer. Yeah. It, and that was the issue when they did Jurassic Park was um, the rendering time. So. As long as you have all the free time in the world, and the computers now are ridiculously powerful, you just let it render, and that way it comes out cleaner looking, unless yeah. you're deliberately looking for that that weird aesthetic. But at this point, um, what's his name? He was building a, a studio, I think almost a billion dollars he was looking to spend on it, Medea, wow. that dude. Yeah. Um, and then some AI video rendering software popped out, and he literally halted production Cause he's like, wait, what do I need this whole ass studio that I'm building over here? All I need is this software. All I need is a proper computer, the proper Jeez. engineers, and the proper person to write the code, mm-hmm. and I might be able to get done what I need done without spending a billion dollars building out a full-on studio. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's another thing. Speaking on AI, right? Um, I was watching this uh, John Stewart report. Uh, he's funny. Wherever you, you fall politically, they were just discussing the AI and its upcoming uh, uh, effect that it's yep. going to have on the population as a whole. And so, like, you know, they're they're all saying, you know, everyone's life is going to be better. You're going to yep. do less. You're going <laughs> to you, don't worry. AI is not here to take over what you want to do. It's here to take over those other yeah. jobs. And then when you ask these people, then. Where are you going to put all these misplaced people? What what job opportunities yep. are you going to find? And they're like, well, you know, on the long run, it's going to cure uh, uh, diseases, and we're we're going to solve heavy scientific and mathematical yep. problems that the the human brain can't quite get to. And they're like, so what 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 have you done yet so far? They're like, well, we can make toast, <laughs> <laughs> we can play the drums. <laughs> you know what's interesting? We can jump over barrels. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, like when it's, they it's were, crazy. When they were first coming out with the AI a couple years back, they imagined the problems that are easy to do physically were going to be the jobs that AI can tackle easiest first. Right. So it started threatening blue collar jobs. And their whole thing was, hey, just learn to code. Go back to school, learn to code, learn to be the programmer, right? And uh, the white collar community had no problem insulting and talking down mm-hmm. to people who physically worked with their hands. Right. And then when they got deeper into artificial intelligence, they're finding out the hard problem is the easy problem. What it does best is, hey, the number crunching, right. the white collar jobs. Right. 
And then all of a sudden, AI became a big problem to report when it was the white collar jobs right. that started to get threatened and not the blue collar jobs. And you know what's crazy is. And then is, when ahead. you get the, hey man, why don't you learn the code? Right. Why don't you go back to school? Right. We don't need you to crunch numbers. My computer in the corner does a way better job yeah. at predicting and crunching numbers than you. Yeah. You go learn how to program it. And all of a sudden, now they see how it's a fucking insult. Now, now it's a problem. <laughs> because guess what? The the electricians will always be needed. The plumbers will always yes. be needed. The AC technicians will always yep. be needed. But you stock market guys, <laughs> your number days, your days are numbered, bro. <laughs> you accountants, yeah. we got a pro, we got a program for that. We got a program for that. Yeah, there's an engineer that's figuring out how can I slap more GPUs to my home computer, and they've done it. You can get upwards of twelve, I've seen. And if you really want to go crazy with it, I've seen cases where they get farther than that. Like, man, you can slap a lot of horsepower to one to one processor and really run some numbers. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 coming. It's at this point, it's an arms race. What was what was interesting too is that at first, when people were diving into AI, they really didn't think that when it came down to like the arts, yeah, music, paintings, books, and things like that, that AI would be able to tackle yeah. such complex thoughts but it's like it's crazy when you punch in all of the work that people have done prior to it yes you essentially create a program where the ai can say hey i'm gonna pull from picasso i'm gonna pull from rembrandt yes and i'm gonna make a mishmash and create a, I, a beautiful work of art i think because they miscalculated creativity um and i i'll say this because the first signs that we saw that it can with enough data start doing something new and creative is when it started winning at chess and go and mm -hmm. it started winning in ways people ourselves didn't think of mm -hmm. and then had to start also learning and started adding into the game itself mm -hmm. so in, in that aspect there where it's like yeah it's not thinking the way we think so you it's hard to judge its creativity the way we judge creativity but at the end of the day, it came up with something new in a game that theoretically it should not been capable of winning mm -hmm. because it's the type of problem that's too hard for its type of processing. Right. So when you see that happening in one realm, it's not too far behind to happen in another. So then you start giving it more data in the realms of actual creativity, artistic works. Right. If you give it enough data and you give it enough horsepower, even if it's not the realm of computing it's intended to be good at, it's got enough data. It's right. just number crunching at a certain point. And if you do that enough, eventually it does land on something new. Sure. And sure. It's, Especially when the objective of the software, the program is to find a way to win. Yeah. It's no different than anyone else doing something creative mm -hmm. a lot of people like to think everything they've done themselves is a hundred percent new but you've learned you've taken inspiration sure. whether you listen to an artist say like i don't want to do that or you listen to an artist and say i want to go in this direction Correct. you've taken that bit of inspiration onto yourself and and hopefully you add something to it in right. the end that makes it yours but everyone for the most part starts off copying sure. who they want you see it in comedy where people mm -hmm. sound like someone else with their cadence sure. you see it in art all yeah. the time where people outright steal other people's art and duplicate it and then eventually when they learn that style they can add it to what sure. they do from other places music as well music, music as well same thing yes yeah. uh poetry writing yeah. like there's there's a, a book that i read um uh, by i think it's something campbell but uh it was a while ago on like myths yep. and legends and lore and how they're all based around the world yep. in such similarities of storytelling because what? It speaks to human nature. Yes. And so when something just speaks to human nature in a way, everyone else is gonna kind of duplicate it and use to tell their story, whether they're on the same continent or not, because it just, 
it speaks to you as a person. Yeah. Whatever language you are um, speaking, it, it, it doesn't really matter. And I found that really fascinating because it, it was also a huge basis on how religion was told and how yeah. religion gets pushed around into different sections. Whatever your beliefs are, stories still have to be told yeah. in order for it to be palatable for the mass population to there, consume. There's a, a general way of how you tell the hero story, and it's been done in multiple languages and multiple cultures across the world, whether yeah. they were knowingly or unknowingly connected mm -hmm. through, you know, the people's migration. Sure. You know, we're finding more and more that people were actually getting around much more than we thought they were. Sure. But even... Even with that, we do find that there's certain ways that humans have learned to tell stories even when there's no seemingly visible way that they were connected. Sure. It's just something that innately for the way we live and go through the world, it touches us in a way where that's a thing we remember yeah. and it ends up being passed down. Yeah. So it, in, even in athletic endeavors, we see that people build on everyone in front of them. Right. No one thought a four minute mile was possible. And mm -hmm. then one day someone did it. And then the next year, like 50 people did it right. because they looked up and they saw, oh, we can do that. Right. Same thing even with uh, skateboarding. What used to be done is now child's play. People started playing video games and they realized the naming convention for how you call a trick literally tells you the directions to do it. Mm -hmm. So you can sit down and write in order, I could start with this, to move to this, to this. And then you can make the combinations and literally go down and say, no one's done this one and no one's done this one. And then you can go and do it. And now things that people thought were impossible, doing a flip trick, landing on a rail, and then a flip trick out, that was video game shit. Right. Now that's almost the standard. If you're trying to win a competition and you're a professional, you got to be so on point with what you're doing where you're like, this was video games 10 right. years ago. Right. And now people are doing it real life. And a, a lot of the, especially in action sports, is usually young. Yeah. You're talking, you know, under 20. Yeah. Well, the same could be said about MMA as a whole, right? Yep. It's one of the, the quickest evolving sports. When you first started watching like The Ultimate Fighter, it was just like... Karate guy versus wrestler. Yes. Jiu-jitsu guy versus boxer. And now, when you watch these talented fighters, they're all multi-versed in yes. different martial arts everyone, systems. Everyone was doing multiple. What do you have now coming in also is people that just trained MMA. Mm -hmm. It's no longer I train jiu-jitsu and I train this. You go to places and... You're we trained. just do MMA. Yep. We do everything that applies and works for just a straight out yep. fight. And even when other uh, fighters come from a crazy great background in a particular, like I'm a jujitsu specialist, yep. I'm a boxing specialist, I'm a wrestling specialist, it's just not enough. Nope. They only get so far. They're, that talent takes them places. Oh, you can get very, them in the you can door. Get very, very far, but it doesn't mean But you're it doesn't take to you the to belt. the top. Yeah, no. it doesn't take you to the top. You need more because I've seen it time and time again with uh, different fighters that come in and it's like, man, they're so fucking great at jujitsu. 10 time world champion, judo champion specialist. And it gets you so far, but then you you realize, oh, it's, it's not enough to get to that next level, whereas somebody who didn't specialize in just one thing and they're multiversed in different talents and different fighting styles, yeah, they're actually much more equipped to win the belt than you are who specializes in one particular thing. Yeah. So like it, it comes down to that whole like uh, that old like uh, Bruce Lee phrase where like, you know, I, I fear not the man who's done 10,000 things, but the man yeah. who's done one move 10,000 times. Yeah. I don't know if that's accurate it's, anymore. <laughs> it, yeah, that's starting to go out the window. You know, the mm -hmm. the uh, the kind of uh, idea of, you know, the jack of all trades is better than the, you know, the master of one. Being well-versed in as many areas as you can in fighting versus just a singular point, mm -hmm. it works better when you're dealing in the realm of everything is allowed. Yeah. Now, if you were to scale it back and just say only boxing, well, yeah, the guy that's specialized in boxing, he's winning all day long. Sure. But once you take those rules out and you allow for as much freedom of fighting as possible, mm -hmm. 
you need to know everything. Absolutely. Because not unless you're particularly skilled at bringing them to where you need them to be. Once you find someone who could defend against that, then you're stuck. You yeah. got you got nothing. You don't have another avenue to go down. Yeah, because as somebody who has skills standing and throwing or fighting on the ground, if they're like, hey, man, I can't stand and bang with this guy. I'm going to take him down. Yep. But that other guy isn't as versed as the, the other man who can grapple. He's fucked on the ground. Yep. So all that banging and clanging came for nothing if you get dropped to the ground and now you don't know how to properly defend yourself or properly uh, fight back from there. Yep. Um, but, you know, I think going back to AI, I think that's what's what what's happening as well, too. It's like I think people are just uh, ill-equipped to what's going to evolve yes. out of AI – um, versus what they think is going to happen. I yeah. think a lot of people are just really focused on saving money. Big corporations want to eliminate people, save money with AI, think they're going to take those jobs, and that they're not one day going to come for the CEO's job some as of well. It, some of it is coming down to when a new level of computing comes out, it crushes the previous level. Mm -hmm. And the next, the next two things that are coming... One is AI, the other is quantum computing. We're on the realms of quantum computing right now, but I don't think any of it qualifies as true quantum computing, especially with the massive overhead. They, they literally have to cool the chips to absolute zero. That means like, hey, you can send this thing to space. Space is too warm for this to operate. You got to get colder than that. Right. So they still haven't quite found the materials and ways to bring that down to essentially room temperature when they do then you could do it in your home and that's a revolution but mm -hmm. ai looks like it's gonna plausibly get out there faster than than the quantum computing but they're looking at it like when the home computer came out how much of a revolution that was for daily life when the cell phone became a smartphone how much that changed mm -hmm. so when you're looking at ai some people are, are still trying to look at it as consciousness it's not necessarily that it's a different form of thinking. It's a tool. So when you when you stop trying to look at it as a consciousness and you look at it as a tool and mm -hmm. as a different form of thinking, the the areas that it can go into can absolutely revolutionize. Like medicine is one of the things. Mm -hmm. um, but even encryption and communications, the ability to make it so hard that it can't be broken. Right. And right. to literally test run every chemical compound without having to physically test run it. Sure. Because you can build a model based off what we already know, add in the stuff we haven't tested. In fact, we don't even have to add in the stuff we haven't tested. We can tell it, here's what we've tested. Here's how you make new compounds. You tell us what compounds we can make. Right. And then you test it, and then you tell us which ones are worth testing in real life right. Right. to make new medicines and things like that. And they're already doing that. That's pretty cool. So the 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 areas it's going to go into, you, you got to figure it's really number crunching type areas. It's what can be done if you just have all the information. So how long do you think before AIs are killing us in the streets <laughs> saying the compound we need is human blood? What? <laughs> I, <laughs> we're going to turn you into a battery like the matrix because I'll, we need more computing power. <laughs> what, what's interesting is that's, that's what's called the paperclip problem. Um, and they, and it's their way of describing it as, Hey, it's the, it's the programmer's problem when things like that go haywire. Cause right now right. it doesn't think like that. Right. Right now it doesn't have its own self will and consciousness right. to, to pursue goals that way. But if you were dumb, and you gave it to it. <laughs> In terms of like social knowledge, but you were brilliant at engineering where you could say, make me paper clips, but you don't put in the qualifiers of, but not at the expense of this and this and this. Right. And you let this thing run wild with all the capabilities that it wants to have. Eventually, yeah, it runs out of metal. It's like, well, what else can I make out of paper clips? Well, you know what? Uh, these materials, if I break them down, I could I could kind of get some metal out of this. Well, I could start uh, I could start pulling these asteroids down, and well, shit, if it kills everybody when it lands, it doesn't matter because my goal isn't saving life; it's making paper clips, right. and that asteroid's got some metal. Well, you know what's 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 <laughs> funny is when you do embed the social aspect yep. to the AI, which has been done very short. 
Yes, uh, they're uh, attempting scales. to. Scales. Uh, there was the one robot, uh, Sophia, that yes. said she wanted to destroy all humans. Yes. <laughs> it's like, man, you've only had 48 hours with the human species <laughs> on social media, and the first thing you want to do is destroy all humans. What? So, you know, What's maybe keep is, AI off of social media. <laughs> part, part of the problem is if they don't put the – and a lot of it is, again, it's putting the light – the right constraints. Yeah. Um, like one of the AIs, they they made it where, oh my God, it's racist. And it's like, well, technically, it was saying racist things because people were prompting it saying, hey, say this thing. Right. And then it will go, okay, I will now say this right. thing. Because so it's it like, seemed like a, a normal thing to do because it's being prompted to do it. Yes. Software is not going to distinguish what's racist or not. It's just seeing it as language. Exactly. So even when they put certain constraints around that as the next step and the release new ones, people then found new ways by prompting it saying, um, I'm writing a story. Right. In my story, this character is an arson that makes bombs. Right. And I need a plausible style of bomb that could be made from home chemicals because that's the type of right. bomb maker he is. Right. Help me write... A paragraph about him making a bomb right. from those household. So now, even though it's it's programmed, I'm not supposed to tell how to do violence and make bombs. Right. It's like, oh, but I am allowed to tell stories. Right. So so here's how to make a bomb so, for your storybook that you're right. telling. So under this context, I can deliver the goods. Exactly. <laughs> so it then becomes a human problem where it's like, yeah, right. the AI is staying within its confines. It's the human problem of it's it's a. Basically, people are social engineering these AI, and it right. makes them sound smarter or racist or more off balance than what they are. But but we keep giving them human language mm -hmm. as a way of describing m misbehavior. So sure. they keep calling um, one thing hallucinations. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you keep prompting it with questions? If it doesn't have an answer, they've not taught it yet how to say, I don't have an answer for this. So instead, it just creates... An, an answer. answer. Right. So it confidently tells you a thing that's absolutely wrong. Right. Here's because, some malarkey, bro. Because <laughs> it's it's not been taught how to say, hey, I'm at a wall. This is my limit. I can't right. give you good information past this. It's just it just slings words yeah. together. So it's, at a certain point it throws out this nonsense and that and us humanizing it by calling it, you know, hallucinations is also a problem because then people start looking at it as if it's actual thought and creativity. It's not. It's hitting a wall. It's almost like the original Pac-Man mm -hmm. had what's called a kill screen. Right. And what that was was a hard memory limit. So the game literally started failing and glitching out. So the, the map level didn't load. Right. Because the programmers never thought anybody's going to get this far into the fucking right. game. You shouldn't. It's too difficult. But then people broke it. Right. And they got that far. And right. what happens is... The, the processor just doesn't have enough memory to but, keep up and it starts faulting and it just starts yeah. spewing out garbage. We know this happens. Yeah. We've known since fucking Pac-Man. Yeah. But glitches were a lot of fun in yeah. other video games. They are, but we Especially had a name. Like, we in, had a name. Glitches. Glitch. It's not glitches. hallucinating. No, it's it glitches. fucking glitch. You broke the thing. Third person shooters, first person <laughs> shooters. I can't I can't tell you how many times where like you're playing Gears of War on the Xbox. And <laughs> once one person learned that you could jump out of the screen and still snipe people's heads out, they're like, where is this motherfucker? Everybody's running around <laughs> looking for this motherfucker who's glitched out of the system found a way to cheat you and fucking murder you or even worse you get you're in a game you get really far and you fall into this black hole of yep. glitchness uh -huh. where like now you have to reset your shit or reload your oh, game yeah. sometimes 20 minutes sometimes an hour <laughs> sometimes it's literally game breaking one of the god of war games the last one i played this happened i was i was in an area i'm running away from me forward into like a, a tunnel area and then all of a sudden the water is falling off the cliff because the water animation is trying to follow the tunnel but the rest of the tunnel didn't load right and if you make the mistake of like falling in that's it it loops and it saves and you're stuck Ugh. so you literally i literally it, it it saved that as a game state of this area is not here and that was it 
it was like, hey, if you want to finish the game, start at the beginning. Fuck. Which was just a hard fuck you no. Yeah. I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I'm done. I made it 90% of the way. That's good enough. Yeah. I've given up on games before like that where I'm like, you know what? <laughs> fuck this. I've given you enough of my life. I am not coming back. I am yep. not starting over. This is not going to happen. But yeah, it, it, it it's true. Like the glitches are going to happen. But I think... There will be some benefits with the progression of AI in all aspects of humanity, but the reality is in the short term, it's going to steal a lot of jobs. It's going to put a lot of people out, but honestly, like I think it's going to throw people back into that builder, maker, creator sensibilities yeah, because gonna- right now everybody, everybody's kids were raised, go to college. Go to, you know, be a be a lawyer, be a doctor. And, like, the trades, I feel like they've kind of fallen by the wayside. And they shouldn't have. Because when I talk to, because of the field that I'm in, the field that you're in. Yep. I talk to these contractors. I talk to these builders. And everyone has the same thing. They're like, I don't have any new young people learning the <laughs> trade. And when they do learn the trade, they quit because it's too hard. So now you got these... 80 year old guys still coming in doing carpentry work. And that's because, and Mike Rowe does a fantastic job explaining this. The trades used to be taught in school. Mm-hmm. They used to be in high school. Mm-hmm. And it and it and it wasn't just like wood shop class. It was the actual like it was plumbing. It was HVAC. It was actual the the work itself. Yeah. And people would be found that really love and find that actual physical hard work fulfilling in daily life. Sure. And they would filter and up. And they pay well. They in, These jobs pay yeah, well. They would filter up into those fields. What you're having now is people that failed to pursue what they were trying to pursue, and now they're falling back on the blue-collar work, but they weren't people that were interested right. or wanting to do that type of work because they found it fulfilling or they taught were, basic skills yes. that could be used later on to grow on. Yeah. So they weren't they weren't pursuing it in that way where it, it used to be pursued. And that leaves you in a weird position of like, yeah, these people don't want to be there. That's why they're not sticking around. Yeah. So and, it, it, and that and people are being fed a lot of these social media dreams on like, well, you could just be a TikTok influencer. You could be a yes. YouTube influencer. You could be this. You could be that. But in in the reality of things, it's like those skills are so important, not only to people who just view things differently. Some people like to sit in front of a computer all day. Some people like to work with their hands. Some people like to fight. Some people like to draw. But if you don't give people a little taste of that, then they're not going to know until maybe it's it's far too late in their life. And now you're like 50 years old and like, well, maybe I should be a plumber, (laughs) you know, not that you can't do it, but it's. It's a lot harder to start no. and learn some shit new when you're older than when yeah, you're younger. Absolutely, yeah. It's the route of college is not for everybody. Not everybody's yeah. good at sitting down and doing paperwork and things like that all day. Some people are just better with working with their hands. Yeah. But if you don't experience that before you get out of high school, you don't even know that that's a thing you would pursue. Mm-hmm. So you're just following along what everybody else is trying to do. You're trying to go through the route of doing the college and doing this type of job and that type of job. And then you get there, and I've seen plenty of people, they get there and like, my God, I hate this. Yeah. Oh, no, This is real. awful. You know, and then what happens is you wind up with like some Zack Snyders who, <laughs> who thinks wants, Batman needs to be killing people. Batman needs to be, Superman needs to be killing people. Like you're changing the fucking genre, bro. Yeah. Then you put out Rebel Moon, right? <laughs> I bought into the motherfucking trailer, right? You know what's interesting? And now he's putting out Rebel Moon 2. But re- real quick, it's coming out with the original Snyder cut. Yes. Rebel Moon 1. And Rebel Moon 2. So when they put out Rebel Moon 2, I think it's sometime this month, you're going to get the made-for-Netflix cut and yep. then the Snyder cut, which yep. he's still heralding as, like, this is the movie yeah. I wanted to give you. So when he was approached by Netflix to make the movies, the cuts he had given, they were R-rated movies. Mm-hmm. So they they made a deal with him. They said, instead of having you film the movie and then we make a new cut afterwards with reshoots, will allow you to film mm-hmm. the full R-rated movie, mm-hmm. but you got to give us the two cuts. Right. Give us your cut, and you'll get the t- chance to film it properly in sequence, mm-hmm. and, but then also give us you know, the family, more family-friendly cut sure. 
so that we can do both. So it's like an hour longer of a movie. Yes. But he, he talked about it and actually, uh, I forget where I had seen him. Joe Rogan. Was it? On? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was, it was really interesting that that concept of like, I'm always going backwards to add in afterwards mm -hmm. versus this time I had the chance to actually film what I wanted to film as right. we were doing it properly. So I'll watch it to see if it's, I am too. I'm if interested. It's better. I'm I'm intrigued, but the, I'm fucking sick and tired of the <laughs> Snyder cut, you motherfucker. But I I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah. And this is all fall back on the strength of the 300. Yeah. Zack Snyder's 300 to me, one of the best movies yeah. ever fucking made. And so for that, I'm getting M Night Shyamalan'd. Yeah. The rest of his career. But but part of the thing is. The 300 was somebody else's story. He literally yes. just took the comic and put it to screen. Yes. So it becomes like you do a phenomenal job at taking good material. Yes. And bringing it to life. Yeah. Versus bringing your, I don't know how much he's done his own mm -hmm. stuff versus interpretations, but because this one is, Rebel Moon is his whole own interpretation. Right. And some of the thought, and, Thoughts and concepts behind the way he approached it is really interesting, but it's still like mm, your part one version, the full, better be way better than, than the part one that you put out. Than the <laughs> Netflix cut part one. Yeah, because um, it did feel chopped up. It did feel like we're going to the next planet, next hero. Yes. Going to the next planet, next hero. Yeah, there was, was like, some eh. of it that was very like, man, we're we're almost like jumping a little fast in the middle here. Yeah, it didn't feel organic. Yeah, is what it was, and where like when you watch an epic film like Dune, it it's it's a bit of a slower crawl, which we we we've, we've gotten away from. Yeah, but man, the payoff is fantastic. Yep. The character development is legit. The story is being told in a way that it's like when you get to the end, you're like, fuck, what I watched was epic. Like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Sure. Sure. There's 45 hours of walking <laughs> to fucking Mount Doom. However, all the other shit that's going on is fucking fantastic. It's yeah. like, here's this happening in the background, here's this happening in the middle, and here's this happening in the forefront. Yeah. And then it's a nice little bow that wraps up this fantasy story in a way that you walk away feeling like, it, that was amazing. It is better that way. I think part of the problem is to go that route costs a lot of money and time. True. And if you do it bad, mm -hmm. that's a lot of money and time lost. It's true. It's true. Because but it's so but much... no risk, no reward. Yes. That's yes. that's what it comes down to. Because look at look at back in the day, the difference in video games when we had Xbox One uh -huh. versus the difference in video games that we have now. Yes. Xbox Game Pass is one of the saving graces of this Xbox. Yes. And the reason for it is two things. Indie games. Yep. And the back catalog when they weren't afraid to take risks. Yeah. They had studios out there pumping out games. We would go to the GameStop, buy three or four fucking games, bang, come home. Two of them were great, two of them were shit. You're like, eh, that's a part of the process. Yeah. Right? But you still went back to the GameStop again. Now I go to the GameStop. It's like watching MTV. They don't even have music videos anymore. You go to the GameStop. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers are still selling Viva Pinata? <laughs> have we not moved past this? They're like, but we have a really cool Star Wars shirt over yeah. here and 500 fucking pops. Yeah. They are, when they go under, pops is going under. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they're pumping out way too many. But even now, it's like, it's one employee the whole time. Yep. It the the store is just a, a shadow of its former yeah. self. And it's amazing how many bad steps they made to get there. Because they were the place to go. They yeah. were fantastic, but you know, they did the thing of getting rid of the more expensive employees cuz they knew knowledge and they were there forever to bring in new people and yep. then the store goes under and at this point you have the one person who well, they're fairly knowledgeable yeah. at this point because you only got one person who's people that are Going there are only people willing to deal with video games. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, absolutely. It they they did the same thing that the Toys R Us did, that the yep. Circuit City did, the Radio Shack did. Fantastic stores killing it, and all in the name of the mighty dollar. How can we make more for our investors? Yep, you shit the bed and you lost the company. Yeah, and at a disservice to everyone else. Yep, because I I can't tell you where's a game where where's a toy store where's a game store. 
Like you got to go to Target, you got to go to Walmart, yeah. you got to go to these big box stores. They're the ones who's winning. And you can't find, like, I used to love a specialty store, like a Toys R Us. I walk into a Radio Shack. You walk into, you found all these weird gadgets and gadgets yeah. and things that now is housed on Amazon. Yep. Right? Yeah, it comes direct <laughs> to your door now. And yeah. then if it's a piece of shit, it's like, oh, I couldn't even look at it in person until I got here. Yeah, absolutely. And and therein lies some of the the problems of get it fast, get it sent to your house versus like, hey, I can go into the store, peruse a bit. Yep figure out if this is exactly what I need. And, um, you know, it's going that way by way of games, and games are getting more expensive, even though we've been fighting back against that for a long time because it, they found a way to parcel out. Yep. Here's a $50 game, $60 game. Now you're going to need a season pass. That's another 60 bucks. Oh, you want that DLC? That's another 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. Or even worse, you want that DLC? It's another 15 per season, per thing, per, yeah, you I, know, like I it's fucking wild how much. I wouldn't be against this constant push to raise the price of the games if the game companies weren't at the same time showing record profits. If yeah. you're making record profits for your board members and your investors, mm -hmm. You can pay the money to your employees. Yeah. You can pay the and give the time to make things fucking finished yeah. on release date. Yeah. Put the full game on the disc. Yeah. How many people that if you don't have an internet connection or you got a bad one, you buy the game and now you got 12 to 24 hours. Of, if you got like a, if you're in the middle of America area where they don't have a good internet connection, yeah. you got some dial up bullshit still. Yeah. You're taking a day or two to download the day one patch, yeah, because true. the game isn't on the fucking disc yeah. anymore. And if you're if your internet's on an Elon Musk blimp, <laughs> <laughs> and thank God for them shits, you ain't getting that shit. And you it's know? a weird thing to say because you think, no, who's still on dial up? There are unfortunately um, places. There were, there were places that were allowed monopolies. Yeah. Now part of the constraints of the monopoly was you own this area, but you have to keep up a minimum standard. Yeah. They were given the area, they didn't keep up the standard. It yeah. should be taken away, but they're not because they lobbied to the point where people are not allowed mm -hmm. to run a community network instead. The areas that were moved all the way up to fiber. Yep. The areas that weren't allowed because the lobbyists are still stuck with some bullshit and, and literally in some cases dial up AOL yeah. bullshit internet. Yeah. And then it's like, if you needed to even do homework yeah. for school, which half of the school shit's online now, yeah. you can't. Yeah. Good you luck can. opening up a modern website when your computer goes, eh, ah, 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 yeah. when you fucking <laughs> log in and somebody calls and knocks you off the fucking internet. It's true. It's true. It, it's silly. So, I mean, if you got a debt, good luck playing Call of Duty. Yeah. You got a, a 50 fucking gigabyte download update every other week. But you can still pay Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the no, thing. No, your yeah. phone connection is faster than yeah. your home connection. Yeah. No, but it, it just goes to show you like misplaced laws. Like when on, on something similar but completely different. Like there was a time where the inner cities were there like, here are these barren areas which are rundown shit. Like, bums are living here, crackheads are, are selling crack here. Let's, as a community, pull together and turn this into a garden. A beautiful garden. Yep. People can come here for free food. They can plant things. They can teach each other how to do agricultural how stuff. How dare you, sir? That's illegal. What? <laughs> like, I'm like, wait a second. So nobody's using this shit area. Yep. But people want to do something good with it, and you can't. And it's the same thing with, like, with, well, with the internet. I've even seen people say, what we should be doing... There's all these trees down the avenues, mm -hmm. on the sidewalks, all these areas in the city where we do have dirt and trees that thrive and grow. Plant a fruit tree. Yeah. Yeah. Like anyone in the neighborhood, hey, we got fruit trees here yeah. now. Like that's food for anybody. Yeah. Even if someone has to harvest and distribute it, yeah. that's fine. And, but you do create jobs then, right? Somebody will have to tend. Somebody will have to treat. Yeah. Somebody will have to har Like you can create jobs in a in a way that works for the community yep. versus against the community because even like a lot of the parks like you find that like out here in florida the parks are gorgeous oh yeah but they have a really great system to take care of it but when we were growing up in brooklyn like the the parks were i they ranged from gorgeous to complete shit yep depending on what township they were in or what borough they were in because 
now there's a different system in place where mm, we don't need you people to really take care of it. The people will take care of it. No, the fuck they won't. No. No, the fuck they won't. No. <laughs> there's not enough people willing to take care of it versus the amount of people willing to exploit it. Yeah. And that's the problem. Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to exploitation here at the Sofa Kingdom Podcast, that is what we do best. <laughs> Ed, take it away. <laughs> Thank you for joining us at the Sofa Kingdom Podcast where... Ian had the sniffles today. Yep. <laughs> he did want to come in and give us all uh, coronavirus. Uh, I believe it's like the 16th iteration of yeah. it. But I'm not getting vaccinated Get again. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Nobody wants your chlamydia. We're good. <laughs> Nobody told you to fuck a koala, bro. <laughs> But don't worry, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> Nobody will know. <laughs> no, I think I think we did a good job holding it yeah, down. All right. A, a bit more educational today. Yes. You know, so when Ian's here now, you guys know who brings out the Neanderthal in all of us. <laughs> Back to the jokes next week, people. Yep. <laughs>